all of which I hold to be faulty. I have them all listed on my chart over here. You're welcome to come look at it afterwards. They are assuming that all of the lead in the sample is daughter lead, as he uh, illustrated. We don't know that. It may have been created half lead, half uranium. Uh, so the lava coming from volcanoes is frequently dated. Matter of fact, Leakey's uh, uh, skulls were dated, not his personal skulls, the ones that he found. Uh, <laughs> Leakey's uh, discoveries were dated using the lava that they were in, the lava in the same strata, using potassium argon. And yet I can give you many references. Uh, I don't have, don't have them with me. I have them over at the church. But uh, references of where potassium argon, uranium lead uh, dating methods have proven to be wildly wrong because the initial assumptions uh, determine your outcome. It could easily have been created recently with a certain quantity of uranium or lead. The very fact that we have radio polonium halos, uh, which would be pretty technical for this audience, but uh, the very fact that they exist in granite rock indicates that the earth was created cold, not hot. It did not cool down. And I have plenty of information on that. Uh, as far as, uh, well, I've got a hundred other things we've kind of glossed over here, but uh, you, you said that the, it irrefutably shows the earth to be 4.6 billion years old. Well, that's irrefutably de assuming, or based on the assumptions that you accept. You are accepting the thought that uh, there was no lead or uranium present uh, in a mixture to begin with, and that all of the lead is daughter lead, and that the sample has remained pure. I would contend, and I think could easily show, uh, matter of fact, I may have that book with me, where of the 19,000 uh, dating methods uh, done in a survey, they did a survey of 19,000 dating methods, only, I, th I believe only 1,000 was considered acceptable because the others fell outside of the uh, expected date based on the geologic column. And therefore, the information was not published. So the only dates that get published are the ones that are politically correct uh, based on the current evolutionary theory. If something goes wrong, if a laboratory comes up with a wildly different age, it will not make it into the accepted publications because that might cause the common people to realize that they're not as unified in their belief as they would like them to think. If the stars are billions of light years away, and we do not know that they are, but uh, let's assume that they are, and they may very well be. We only know up to 60 or 100 light years based on parallax trigonometry. Uh, so the first thing you have to realize is we do not know the distance to the stars. Uh, there may be some that are billions of light years away, and there probably are. But uh, I would say from a creationist standpoint that if the God that I worship is able to create the stars, he could certainly create the star light already in place. Uh, he made them to be a light on the earth, the book of Genesis tells us, so he made the stars and the light at the same time. Third thing we need to realize is that we do not know that the speed of light is a constant. It may have gone faster in the past. Light may have been infinitely fast in the past. We do not know that it's a constant. I can easily prove that it's not a constant. They talk about the Doppler effect of light, uh, the red shift. Well, that proves light is not constant. If you're in a car driving down the highway going 60 miles an hour and you flip your headlights on, is the light from your headlights going the speed of light plus 60? Uh, the speed of light is not necessarily a constant, 186,000 miles per second, and it could very well have been that the speed of light has been decaying. We would not notice it much now if we're on the tail end of a logarithmic curve uh, because it begins to taper out toward near flat. We also would not notice it because most of our measuring instruments to, uh, when I was in physics class in high school, we measured the speed of light in the hallway with rotating mirrors and a laser, which is not a real accurate way to do it, but we got close. And The, the more accurate ways involve atomic clocks. And if, uh, to, for your time factor, and if the speed of light is decaying, it may be also at the same time throwing off our atomic clocks at the same rate. Therefore, you would not notice uh, a decline. There's been some very uh, reputable, reasonable research on the, that very question, is the speed of light a constant? And so far, it's still up for grabs, but uh, there are a number of people who say, no, light is not constant. To go the question to uh, on the other side, if evolution is true, and several pointed this up. Why are there not hundreds of skeletons of various stages of man rather than just a few partial skeletons? Well, just as I say, preservation of an organism is an accident. It shouldn't happen. The only time that a fossil is formed, be it human or otherwise, is when the remains are preserved by a catastrophic entrapment, usually in the absence of oxygen. Uh, man is uh, superior in his abilities to, um, that he also inhabits the atmospheric, um, well, let's simply say, the terrestrial environment, breathing air. 
and not uh, swimming around in the bottom of the swamp where he might be preserved along with a log. We do find remains. We also have as a result of theological views the idea that has persisted for a long time relative to an afterlife. And we have done things with those bodies. Uh, in some cases, we have cremated them. That eliminates the fossil part rather nicely. Most burial types, particularly in the, in the early, we'll say the Old Testament, the, the Jewish religion, you bury them quickly without preservation. That encourages no fossils. Now, I cannot say what's going to be here when we have all these glass encased the preserve the body bit, the sort of uh, the, the renaissance of the Egyptians bit where you kill the slaves and put food in there and music and the whole schmear in the hope that they'll have all that stuff. There's, even there they ended up getting looted. But fundamentally that should happen with other organisms. We have teeming hordes of creatures, mostly arthropods, that have one purpose and that is destroying the decaying remains of the dead. Another question that kind of comes up here, and um, we have the skeleton remains of, seems like, a lot of dinosaurs that were here millions of years ago that have, but we don't have the skeletons of the man that were here millions of years That's ago. That's largely because man, 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 man and the dinosaurs. How long I don't, I don't want to trash be? your idea about the Flintstones and Alley Up. But man and the dinosaurs were not there at the same time. As a matter of fact, mammals were small creatures. And with the demise of the dinosaurs, that opened an ecological niche where they came in. And I know my colleague insists we have dinosaurs today and that man and, well, that the Alleyup um, syndrome lives. I'd like to get into that one. I'm going to get into that <laughs> dinosaurs today. I don't want to worry about anybody who's eating Flintstone vitamins. They're good That's for you. Uh, Take them. Um, dinosaurs. Um, I don't know, boy, there was some question about dinosaurs. So I'm trying to think how and uh, but how long ago dinosaurs. And I'd like for both of you to address how long do you believe? I mean, or do you have an idea how long you think man has been on the earth? I mean, we talk about beginnings. We talk about the beginning sure. of the earth, but man, but dinosaurs. Um, maybe some comment okay. about dinosaurs and just a general comment. All right, I would say without question all life, uh, all species of life have been here the same length of time, six or seven thousand years. Man, uh, all animals created at the same time. About 95 percent of the animals that have lived are now extinct. We have seen a tremendous amount of extinction and yet no new kinds of animals have ever come on the scene. We have new varieties. But that's just variation, that is not evolution. The only examples uh, evolutionists will point to uh, as evidence for evolution is, is examples of variation. Taking two dogs and developing a variety of dogs, but, and you can do that, there's no question, a variety of cows or corn, but uh, you can crossbreed dogs for the next 20 million years and you will always get dogs. You will never get elephants or tomatoes or bananas. You will always get the same kind of animal. I didn't say that only. I said well, generally. one of the ways sure, okay. in which we preserve large masses. Right. Yes. There are trillions of fossils available to study, and yet no intermediate fossils from one kind to another. So it's not that, uh, to me, that's a perfect proof of a great catastrophe, the worldwide flood. The top 3,000 feet of Mount Everest from 26,000 to 29,000 is all sedimentary rock containing millions of seashells and uh, water-dwelling creatures. So the Earth definitely There's was... another hour. Worldwide flood. Uh, no be. question. The worldwide flood explains the fossils, why there are so many What's of them. What's a cubit? <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 heard, he's heard Bill Cosby too, hasn't he? I know that one. Uh, yeah, right. Bill Cosby straightened that one sure. out. So uh, the creationist explanation of fossils is very simple. I agree they have to be preserved in the absence of oxygen, and a worldwide flood burying them in uh, hundreds or thousands of feet of sediment would quickly cause the formation of fossils. Wood can petrify in good conditions in 30 to 50 years. There have been petrified